If you observe Muslim scholars and apologists long enough, you'll notice something that I find absolutely fascinating. There are basically two steps to Islamic apologetics. Step one, keep people in a state of ignorance. Fill their heads with myths about how wonderful and perfect Muhammad was, and about how amazing and brilliant the Quran is, and keep these people as far away from reality as possible. Step two, if a Muslim, for whatever reason, learns a fact that conflicts with the myths you've filled his mind with, then lie to him about the significance of the fact, and lie to him about everything related to the fact. I've seen this over and over and over again. Let me give you an example. Since we've been talking about Sheikh Yasser Qadi recently, we'll consider some of his comments about Uthman burning the early Quran manuscripts. As we all know, Muslims are told all their lives that the Quran has been perfectly preserved from the time of Muhammad. They're told that there isn't a single variant anywhere in the entire manuscript history of the Quran. They believe this utter nonsense because, again, step one of Islamic apologetics is to keep Muslims in a state of ignorance. But because non-Muslims keep putting out articles and videos about the history of the Quran, and because we keep quoting Muslim sources about changes in the Quran, Muslims occasionally learn some basic facts about the history of their book. For the past two decades, critics of the standard narrative have been putting out a ton of material. And many Muslims, thanks to us, have learned something interesting about the Quran. They learned that Uthman, the third of the rightly guided caliphs, burned the early Quran manuscripts. Burning books is something that tends to stand out in people's minds when they hear about it. So, when we show Muslims, from their own sources, that Uthman burned the early Quran manuscripts, they tend to remember this. Naturally, over the past two decades, many Muslims have gone to their scholars, asking them to explain why the Caliph Uthman had to burn the early manuscripts. These concerned Muslims said, in effect, you told us that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. How can we reconcile our belief in one perfect Quran with early Muslims burning manuscripts? Now, if my theory is correct, a Muslim scholar who responds to this question is going to minimize the significance of the fact he's trying to account for, and he's going to lie about everything related to the fact. He's going to try to lull his Muslim listeners back into a state of ignorance. Let's see if I'm right. In a 2012 video titled, Why Did Uthman Burn the Quran?, Sheikh Yasser Qadi admits that people have been asking him about this. The question that many people ask us is, why did the third caliph uh, of, of Islam, uh, Uthman, why did he burn all of the Qurans uh, of his reign and his empire? So people found out from us that Uthman burned the early Qurans, and they went to scholars like Sheikh Yasser Qadi for answers. Yasser Qadi informed them that, in Islam, burning the Quran isn't exactly a bad thing. Uh, you know, this is a, a cultural misunderstanding because from the Islamic tradition, when you burn the Quran, you're not disrespecting it. In fact, this is the way to respectfully dispose of it. Why did Uthman burn Qurans? Well, some Muslims were making copies of the Quran on their own and they didn't always do a good job. And people would simply uh, copy with their own hands any copy that they had. And obviously human errors occurred. Obviously when you have 6th, 7th, 8th generation copyists, anybody at home who knows how to read and write is just copying the Quran, obviously errors are going to creep in. And there's no question that there were variances, spelling mistakes. But Uthman had the solution. Make one standard version of the Quran. The third caliph, Uthman, made a very simple decree. And he said, look, Anybody who wants a copy of the Quran has to copy it directly from the master copy. And to facilitate this, Uthman made a number of master copies from the original one. And he sent one uh, master copy to every major city in the Islamic province. And, he's, and this master copy was kept in the Grand Mosque of the city. And from then on, anybody who wanted a Quran was free to go to the master copy and copy it directly from the original copy that was in the, uh, that was in the main mosque of the city. But what about all of the other Qurans, with all of the mistakes? Therefore, when this was done, Uthman then said, anybody who has a private collection, anybody who has his own handwritten Quran that's 7th, 8th, ninth generation away, you need to dispose of it. And how is it disposed of? The way that you dispose of Qurans is you burn them. Still sounds a little creepy, burning books. 
What if people didn't want to hand over their copies of the Quran? And so everybody, there was no hue and cry. There was no, everybody voluntarily agreed. This is a great idea. Why shouldn't we go directly to the source? Why shouldn't we go directly to the official Quran? And so everybody agreed. And therefore, the people's Qurans were compiled by the authorities. They didn't go house to house searching for them. They didn't go confiscating. It was a voluntary move. And everybody agreed because it makes sense. Everybody understood the problem. So it was totally voluntary and everyone agreed. And the Quran lived happily ever after. So the Caliph Uthman standardized the copies of the Quran and therefore from his time up until our time there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word and this is because of the far-sightedness of the Caliph Uthman and it's something that we're forever grateful for. Now we already know that Yasser Qadi's claim that there are no Quran variants since the time of Uthman is a lie wrapped in a fantasy and smothered with pure evil. But what about his claim that everyone agreed with Uthman? Everybody voluntarily agreed this is a great idea. And so everybody agreed and therefore the people's Qurans were compiled by the authorities. Everyone thought it was a great idea. It was a voluntary move and everybody agreed because it makes sense. Everybody understood the problem. Has Sheikh Yasser Qadi read Islam's most trusted sources? Of course he has. So does he know he's lying? Absolutely. Yasser Qadi says that everyone thought it was a good idea to copy a single Quran and to burn all the others. I'm sure Yasser Qadi has heard of Ibn Masud, but in case he's forgotten, I'll refresh his memory. Sahil Bukhari, 3808. Narrated Masruk. Abdullah bin Masud was mentioned before Abdullah bin Amr, who said, That is a man I still love, as I heard the Prophet saying, Learn the recitation of the Quran from four. From Abdullah bin Masud, he started with him, Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hud Haifa, Muad bin Jabal, and Ubay bin Kaab. So Muhammad gave his followers a list of his best Quran reciters, and Abdullah ibn Masud was first on his list. Abdullah ibn Masud was Muhammad's top reciter of the Quran. I wonder what ibn Masud thought about Caliph Uthman forcing everyone to copy the standardized Quran of Zayd ibn Thabit. Jami at Termidi, 3104. Az-Zuri said, Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Utbah informed me that Abdullah bin Masud disliked Zayd bin Thabit copying the Musahif, those are copies of the Quran, and he said, O oh, you Muslim people, avoid copying the Mus'haf and recitation of this man. By Allah, when I accepted Islam, he was but in the loins of a disbelieving man, meaning Zayd bin Thabit. And it was regarding this that Abdullah bin Masud said, O people of al-Iraq, keep the musahif that are with you and conceal them. For indeed, Allah said, and whoever conceals something, he shall come with what he concealed on the day of judgment. So meet Allah with the musahif. Az-Zuri said, It was conveyed to me that some men among the most virtuous of the companions of the Messenger of Allah disliked that view of Ibn Masud. So, Uthman ordered everyone to copy the Mus'haf of Zayd ibn Thabit. Sheikh Yasser Qadi says that everyone thought this was a great idea. And yet we find Muhammad's top Quran reciter ordering his followers to Avoid copying the Mus'haf and recitation of this man. Sheikh Yasser Qadi says that everyone thought it was a great idea to burn all of their non-standardized copies of the Quran. And yet we find Muhammad's top Quran reciter ordering his followers to keep the Mus'ahif that are with you and conceal them. Don't hand them over to be burned. Muslims, do you have any clue how clearly and obviously this fact alone completely destroys your claims about the Quran? The Quran you use today ultimately goes back to Zayd ibn Thabit's Quran. But Muhammad's top reciter of the Quran said, O oh, you Muslim people, avoid copying the Mus'haf and recitation of this man. You copy and recite a Quran that Muhammad's top Quran reciter condemned. Was Ibn Masud wrong? If so, then Muhammad was wrong for telling people to learn the Quran from Ibn Masud. Let's read another passage. In the 650s, a bunch of Muslims decided to rebel against Uthman. We read about one of their objections to his leadership 
in the history of At-Tabari, volume 15, page 156, Uthman declares, The dissidents say, The Quran used to be preserved in a number of different written versions, and you have abandoned all but one. But verily the Quran is one, and came through one man. In this matter, I have only followed these. Is this the case? Yes, they replied. They sought to have him kill the dissidents. And we have a footnote. The reference, of course, is to Uthman's decision to establish a single definitive recension of the Quran and to destroy the existing versions with their many discrepancies. These presumably refers to the board of editors headed by Zayd bin Thabit, whom he appointed to carry out the task. So when Uthman says, in this matter I have only followed these, he's saying, I just went along with Zayd ibn Thabit and co. So, Sheikh Yasser Qadi claims that everyone thought it was a great idea for Uthman to standardize the Quran and to burn all competing Qurans. And yet, there were Muslims who condemned Uthman for doing this. By the way, notice the lie of one Quran being established. The reason Uthman decided to standardize the Quran was that different Qurans were being used by different Muslims. Uthman issued an official version and ordered everyone else to hand over their Qurans. Even Ibn Masud, Muhammad's top Quran reciter, despised Zayd's version of the Quran. Many people in the Muslim community were upset at Uthman for doing this. But when it was brought up to Uthman, he would reply, Come on, we all know there's only one Quran, right? What we see in these passages is that there were two kinds of Muslims, Quran-focused Muslims and unity-focused Muslims. Quran-focused Muslims had a Quran-first mentality, and they wanted to be honest about the Quran. Unity-focused Muslims had a unity-first mentality, and they were quite happy to lie about the Quran as long as their lies led to greater unity in the Muslim community. Fourteen centuries later, we can see that the unity-focused Muslims won, at least on this issue. If a Muslim so much as thinks about telling the truth about the history of the Quran, he will be abrogated by his fellow Muslims who will view him as a traitor. In fact, this is the best way to understand the current crisis over Sheikh Yasser Qadi. For many years, Yasser Qadi has been a unity-focused Muslim outwardly, but a Quran-focused Muslim inwardly. In public, he would proclaim the perfect preservation of the Quran from the time of Uthman. But behind closed doors, he would admit that there are holes in the narrative. Some Muslims decided to bring the real Yasser Qadi to the surface by publishing his private emails. And in his now abrogated interview with Muhammad Hijab, Yasser Qadi admitted that the standard narrative has holes in it. Sheikh Yasser Qadi is currently being abrogated by a community that has dug itself so deep into a pit of fantasy and delusion, the mere mention of facts and evidence is enough to get you classified as a heretic or an apostate. In the 7th century, they burned manuscripts. In the 21st century, they delete videos. But the goal is always the same. The only difference is that whereas we can't recover burned manuscripts, we already downloaded the deleted videos. It seems that Uthman's desperate attempt to impose the myth of one Quran was all in vain.